In this tutorial we're just going to have a, a quick look at the wolf rearrangement. The wolf rearrangement is is um, used in a variety of reaction mechanisms whereby ketenes are formed. This is a ketene here. Um, basically it's, it's just a, a, a shift, a sigmatropic shift um, to make a uh, homologation species. So we'll have a we'll have a look at this now. And if you look in the sidebar of the of the website here, I've I've probably put some um, well I know I have put some other reaction mechanisms very very similar, and they all involve the Wolf rearrangement or variants thereof. So it's very simple, um, but it, at first it's quite confusing because of we have electron deficient species around called carbenes and ketenes. So here we go. So this is this is the basics of it. So we've got a, a beta um, diazo or ketone, which loses a, a proton, which then undergoes a rearrangement to form uh, a carbene, which then further, uh, sorry, it doesn't undergo rearrangement, it loses nitrogen to give a carbene, which then rearranges to give a ketene, which then can be attacked by a nucleophile to give this species here. So let's have a look at the mechanism. So we take our, our if I just copy that actually, let's just take this. So we just grab that a second, copy, and move this down. Okay, let's move this up here. So we, we get our beta diazo ketone with the loss of the proton here by a base goes to give this species here which is quite stable you remember in the other uh, reactions if you've seen the other tutorials the pK of that is quite low because it's got a, a lot of co um, nice conjugation with the uh, diazo species and with the carbonyl so that's quite happy to fall off it's quite a labile proton because that's a nitrogen there okay and then either by um, heat or by um, some catalyst the nitrogen will come off as nitrogen gas it's a good leaving group to give you the carbene intermediate and then So, if you remember, um, I tend not to write negative charges when electrons have left the species, but these, these two dots indicate there's an orbital there that's full, but also it's, it's not negatively charged, it's, it's got a vacant orbital as well to accept electrons. So what happens now is these electrons can push in there like that, move up there like that and um, if you know me by now I'll push I'll put a double headed arrow on a carbonyl group to indicate it's gone through this this intermediate phase and come back down and then rather than put the electrons back there to give you the same species you started with you get a migration so you get a one two shift the wolf rearrangement there to give you, I'll try and draw it in the same orientation, that dot indicates there's a carbon there, to give you um, this species here R2 and R1, sorry that should, I normally label these up as 1, so it gives you that intermediate species there. So that carbon there is that carbon there. So if we just highlight that in green, 
So this carbon here is actually this one here, okay? So that's our ketene, that's a ketene. And that's our carbene there. Okay. Now the ketene is quite susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So we put a nucleophile in there. That then comes in and attacks this carbon here. You get your double-headed arrow again. Goes off, picks up a proton from your solvent to give your final species here, which is your product. New And what I'll do is I'll just draw that proton back in, in red there. Look. So what you've done now is you've basically moved an R group next to another R group. If you look at the starting material, you've had a rearrangement from this R group moving over to here, basically and you've replaced the R group with some nucleophile. That nucleophile can be, like I said here, it can be uh, ROH, OH, and H, whatever you can imagine really, uh, providing it works of course. So that is the Wolf rearrangement.